Alrighty, so I've been saving one pretty dang big leak for around Christmas time regarding a product that I've been talking about for some time in a lot of my recent content, and that's, of course, something stronger than an RTX 4090, which, yeah, let's be honest, I don't know if you guys really need a leak to consider how much stronger an SKU above the 4090 would be. We just know that NVIDIA could, if they wanted to, enable the full die, which would alone bring about a 12.5% teraflops increase over the 4090, and then I'm sure they could bin those fully enabled dies to hit 3 gigahertz stably and push power consumption to keep it there, and even, you know, use 24 gigabit per second memory from Micron at least to bring a 14% bandwidth increase and if they did all of this they'd probably have a 550 to 650 watt SKU if they wanted it to go to the max that brought at a minimum I'd estimate a 10% performance increase and possibly in a lot of games just a hair below a 20% performance increase over the existing RTX 4090 again if they really pushed it as hard as I think they could and let me tell you, I've been talking about this in recent content. NVIDIA has really pushed some of these Titan test samples to insane levels, with some of them tripping power breakers and labs and even melting equipment connected to them or even melting, well, melting themselves and having to be thrown out. And to be fair, I talk about these crazy things like melting cards and power breakers. Nobody I've talked to at NVIDIA thinks any SKU they release would be some kind of 800 or 1000 watt monstrosity. They think that they would give it two 16 pins for safety reasons and to allow you to overclock it to about 700 watts or something very safely. But that's why it would have two 16 pins. NVIDIA isn't going to launch some 1200 watt ridiculous monster. In fact, I think a lot of this testing of up to 1200 watts was really just NVIDIA seeing what the limits are and just out of curiosity, genuine curiosity going, if we wanted to make a 1200 watt card, we know we shouldn't, but if we wanted to, could we, if AMD hit a home run with RDNA 3? That's what I think they were doing. But of course, we now know that AMD certainly has not hit a home run with RDNA 3. And so at least for now, as I've said before in previous content, the Titan Ada is at a minimum shelved temporarily, if not canceled. But you're all probably wondering by now, why have I always been calling this SKU above the 4090 a Titan instead of the 4090 Ti a lot of other leakers are talking about? Well, it's because I've had actual pictures of a golden colored four slot Titan SKU for a while. And this picture on screen, yeah, this has been heavily manipulated with color and lighting and perspective and spot correcting to make sure nobody can tell where this can come from. And to be blunt, that's all you're getting out of the real pictures of a Titan. But that is from a real Titan engineering sample. That said Titan on it. And well, if we compare it to this RTX 4080 slash 4090 cooler I have here, it looked about like what you would think it would look. It was about, you know, 33% bigger or so, you know, so instead of three slots, four slots. And yes, a full four slots, it wasn't like a three and a half. It really filled out the four slot entirely. And I'm actually told it was pretty hard for smaller people to lift up. And well, you know what? I bet you do want to see more than me holding up a 4080 and describing the Titan and showing one picture proving that I've seen it. And you're going to. Don't worry, Moore's Law is Dead has a dedicated render now that is supported by its patrons, and I'm going to show you multiple views and a real peek at what NVIDIA's top-tier monster that sometimes tripped breakers looked like. But first, you know who does have GPUs on shelves that you can actually buy, unlike the Titan right now? Micro Center. This piece of content is sponsored by Micro Center, who has, in my experience, the best selection and best pricing in 25 stores across the United States for laptops, monitors, TVs, networking equipment, and especially computer components. But they don't just oftentimes have the best tech in stock. They also are frequently doing ridiculous deals. You know, the discounted Zen 4 CPUs they had would also come with 
32 gigabytes of DDR5 for free. They gave away free motherboards with Alder Lake, and they've been selling Zen 3 at incredible bargain prices. They're always doing great deals. And so if you're doing a build this holiday season, and I think it is a good time to build genuinely, I think you should also genuinely go to a micro center for those deals. And then also on top of that, if you click the links in the description, you can get $25 off all CPUs and then another $25 off your overall purchase if you submit your finished build to Micro Center. That's it. You get these discounts on top of all of their other insane discounts. And honestly, guys, they're easy to work with. It's easy for me to work with them. They've been an excellent supporter of Moore's Law is Dead for about a year now. They're going to continue to support me. So if you are doing another build and you're even remotely close to a micro center, I really do recommend you go to them both to save the most money that you can and also to support Moore's Law is Dead. Clicking on the links in the description helps the channel alone. But if you need a new build, going to Micro Center and using those extra deals from Moore's Law is Dead can also help you just as much. So check out Micro Center today. All right. Now let's also, in addition to checking out Micro Center, check out those pictures of the Titan I told you about. So as you can see, this thing is an absolute unit. Being over twice as big as the RTX 4070 cooler that I have also leaked, the thing really isn't that surprising besides the fact that they actually made something this big overall, I'd say. I mean, it, it has the gold finish you would have expected from the previous Titan RTX. It has the same sort of optimized airflow design we've seen out of every other Lovelace card, including that 4070 I leaked, except now, of course, it's just enormous. And of course, it also accepted, at least the engineering samples I saw, accepted dual 16 pins, although... No, it wasn't expected to hit 1275 watts, just another reminder. Most people were expecting this thing to be about a 650 watt card with overclocking above 700 watts. And I do honestly think from my 4080 and 4090 testing that a cooler this insanely huge could cool 600 watts fine. And it's also funny when I realize as much as I make fun of how big the card is, when I look at what the 4080 with its three slot cooler looked like in my case, I'm pretty sure I could have fit the Titan in my case as well. And so as much as I make fun of the power consumption and the size, I do think NVIDIA had pushed this thing just barely below the limit where I couldn't use it. So it's not entirely infeasible. It just seems like something NVIDIA only wants to use in a worst case scenario. But yeah, we're dancing around this subject. Do I think we're going to see NVIDIA launch this ridiculous design? Right now, I honestly doubt it. Although the quality of the engineering samples I saw <clears throat> does make me wonder if they'll do it because they look like clearly finished coolers. They didn't look like early, rough, milled engineering samples. They looked like someone had finished the tooling for a full production run of these products. And so it almost feels like a waste to me if they put this much effort into a four slot design to not use it. And, you know, I guess you could also argue that if they're having trouble keeping the 4090 in stock below $2,000 and it's bidding way above that on eBay. Well, yeah, I guess I could see NVIDIA say maybe they should launch a product like this so they can sell 8102 dies for at least $3,000, if not honestly $4,000. I mean, they can't keep the 4090 in stock below $2,000. And I mean, if, if they could sell it for $3,000 or more, I mean, 8102 in the Titan or 4090 is only a 60% bigger die than 8103, and everyone hates the 4080 with its 8103, so why try to sell five 4080s worth of silicon for $1,200 each when you can sell three Titans and the same amount of silicon for 3000 each? I mean, you'd be making 50% more revenue. Well, here's the thing that counters that whole argument. Any argument that NVIDIA should make a 4090 Ti or a Titan to find a reason to charge $3,000 for 8102, they're already charging over $7,000 for 8102 to data center with a 6000 and that even has a far, far cheaper cooler. So for the time being, as long as AMD can't challenge the 4090 and they just can't, then I think that NVIDIA would be better off just selling a 6000 with a full die instead of bothering with using that for gamers, even if they have a Titan cooler that's tested and works. And I do think NVIDIA firmly has the lead for now. Having said that, though, if AMD did get a whiff that AMD was going to fix their drivers soon and then up clocks, which they seem to be able to do uh, from Tech Power Up, and then also maybe finally stack 
192 megabytes total of Infinity Cache on there, which they haven't even bothered with yet for a massive bandwidth increase, I, I do think there is room, and it is possible and plausible, that AMD may launch a Navi 31 product that is a full tier in performance above their existing 7900 XTX. If they did do that, I think they could launch something else above the 4090, but I just, for now, don't think it will be called a Titan either. And I think what we saw with the Titan was a Skunk's Works project to just see what they could push to, what is the limit, so they know in case they needed something incredibly powerful for this generation, or so they knew ahead of time the limits of what they should even bother with while they're working on Blackwell. And, and, and I don't expect that to really happen. And, and, and the main reason for that, even if... NVIDIA needs a stronger gaming flagship to counteract any 7950 XTX is that I don't think they want to give gamers 48 gigabytes of VRAM unless they absolutely had to. And I just, even if AMD has like a 30% stronger product, let's even say coming, which I don't even think will be that much stronger. I think they can still match it without having to give you 48 gigabytes of VRAM and without having to push power that hard and give you the full die. So I think NVIDIA will just be better off making a 4090 Ti with on only 24 gigabytes of VRAM for about $2,500 or less with maybe two or four SMs disabled so they can continue to give the full dies only to data center and heck. You know, I don't think AMD is going to have a stronger SKU ready for at least a few months. The longer they wait, the longer they have to bin exactly what they want the 4090 Ti to be. While well, they're selling the top yields right now to data center and a fully working product, and the longer they have to wait for faster memory to make that product even better in the future. The Titan that I leaked today, although I can't promise you it won't ever come out, this was, as far as I can tell, the contingency plan for not if NVIDIA lost to AMD, but if they won, but only won by 10 to 20 percent, so they could give it extra RAM and say we definitely have the flagship product that they won't be able to touch for a year, but then this is it. They don't need it yet. They're better off waiting for something better, and they easily have the crown for the time being. And, uh, yeah, so I guess the final question would be, might we see that four-slot design, though, in a 4090 Ti? I'd say maybe, right, if they felt they didn't want to launch a 48-gigabyte Titan, they'd rather keep it to 24 gigabytes, and they wanted to launch this thing in the next six months and push it to 600 watts. But, frankly, I don't think they really need 600 watts to keep the crown from AMD, and that three-slot design has got to be cheaper, and it does have some better compatibility with cases right now, so... I would suspect any 4090 Ti will be 550 or even 500 watts or less with the existing three-slot cooler that we're seeing right now that could easily cool 500 watts. And they'll save that four-slot design probably just as a Skunk's Works project in case something crazy happens with AMD fixing RDNA 3. And uh, so, yeah. That's it. That's the whole video. I told you what the performance would be near the beginning of any Titan card, 10 to 20% better than a 4090. I showed you what it would look like. It was a big, meaty, full four slot design. And I also told you that it would probably pull about 600 watts in power, not 1200, but you could probably overclock it over 700. And I also told you, I don't think it's coming out at least no time soon. It doesn't seem like it's in active development anymore. Seems like it was a Skunk's Works project that, because we have patrons, I was able to show you anyway. So just remember that. This type of content today that I saved for around Christmas, this is only possible because we have the money from our patrons to pay a renderer to do these leaks for you. And just remember that if you have even an extra $2 or $4 a month to support us, because I want to do a lot more leaks like this that I don't see anyone else really doing next year in 2023. And uh, yeah, if you do, you also get ad-free and exclusive content every week, including during this Christmas break. We're going to be dropping more content, including podcasts and videos while I'm out over the next two weeks just to make sure the patrons continue to have content that they're paying for. All that's there for you if you have the extra money. But to everyone else, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about us. Thank you for watching.